Hi everyone, I'm James Falkowski and I'm doing an unboxing of the Sufla metal detector. This is model SMD-01. So there is an extendable shaft. A little push button action there and then a tightening collar. Instructional manual that will probably come in useful in just a few moments. Looks to be a storage bag. So nice storage bag. It's got a couple handles here. Looks like it's got a belt buckle there and then a pocket for accessories. Ah, here's the belt buckle right here. Attach that quickly. And where's the other connection point? All the way down at the end. All right. Then a pure pair of audio headphones. Looks to be a tool kit. So this seems to be a little handled shovel that you can put in. You can use a pick for digging or a shovel for scooping. Oh, and the handle has a little compass on the back end of it. This is the arm rest for hanging on to the metal detector. This is the electronics for it. One of the adapter handles that I believe goes to the wrist. and the sensing coil. So now it's time to look at those instructions and try and figure out how this thing goes together. This looks like it's going to be pretty simple to put together. So this easily attaches here. The sensing coil easily unscrews here and then goes on to the end of the handle. So it should be pretty simple to put this one together. So the screw from here, the bolt from here goes into the receiving nut on the device. And then there are little hooks to hook this into place. And just like this, we're attaching the sensing unit. I'm going to get rid of the tools here. I don't need those right now. Then the upper part of the unit goes in here. There are little button catches for attaching to the release. So we'll try and get that in place. And then that locks in and then you can tighten the collar so that's now securely on there. And then this one adjusts the height up and down so if you want to get the height to different levels uh, I would suggest spinning uh, this lower bar a little bit to one side so you don't keep on clicking on the clicks and then you can turn it back and then find the position that you're interested in. So I'm going to make this really short for assembly. There we go. Next, this arm hold uh, attaches to the upper part. So again, slide in the button control 
and then just let it click into place. Next is the sensing coil. So here we have to take this little screw assembly apart and then it goes through the lower arm here. Uh, inside here there are some serrations to hold and provide some friction so that this uh, sensing coil doesn't move around too much. And I want to be smart, I want to make sure that this is orientated the right way so when I assemble it, the sensing coil is down and the electronics is up. So hopefully I've got that correct. Right, so now as I move this about, the sensing coil stays in the position that I've uh, placed it and then I can just loosen this up and move it if I want to have it at a different height. All right, next, electronics cable. So there's a cable that plugs in the bottom side of the electronic unit. It looks to be a five pin DIN round. So I'm gonna just loop the cable around a couple times so the cable isn't flying loose when I'm using this. And make sure that I've got the pins orientated the right way. So uh, to the top of the unit, the round pins go up. Good, and that's now connected. And finally, the headphones go into the headphone port on the sensing unit. Pretty quick assembly. Now, the other part that we have to do is put batteries in. So I don't have batteries right at the moment. I'm gonna go get those and we'll add them in for a demonstration of this unit. So again, the forearm uh, holder connects into the main stem. The main stem connects to the electronics unit. The main stem then also connects to the sensing coil. So sensing coil, main arm, electronics head, and forearm brace. Pretty simple to assemble, just a few minutes. So now I'm doing a quick demonstration of this. You, you can see that when this gets near my wire, it starts to set off, but also, I'm picking up where the rebar and the concrete are. So at this point I'm looking at the signal and I'm following a metal culvert that goes underneath my driveway. So instead of just the beeps, I'm actually looking at the signal output on the little graph to see how much signal there is returning into the um, coil. Then by moving it back and forth, the signal decreases and I can tell that I'm off the pipe. And as I get closer, the signal gets stronger and the bars increase. So you should always call Digger's Hotline, but why would I maybe want to do this? Um, I'm looking for old barbed wire, uh, old nails, other things on my property that could hurt people. So by having something like this, I can go over an area after work crews have finished or before I start digging for something else, make sure that there's nothing there that shouldn't be there. So I know where all my electrical and plumbing lines are outside, but I may run into something that the uh, former owners buried, and I wanna make sure that I uh, am aware of that before I dig into it.
So my impressions so far are this was really simple to put together. Uh, the operations seem really intuitive. So I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, I'll have to play around with it a little bit more to really get the hang of using it and making sure that I'm not going too fast or too slow when I'm sweeping an area. But for the price that I paid, uh, this is going to help me increase the safety on my farm by being able to not only look for uh, things that I know are there, like pipes and culverts and electrical cables, but looking for old garbage that the former owners may have just buried in the ground and could become a safety hazard in the future, like old barbed wire, old nails, uh, rusty tin cans, etc.